Now let's take a look at reading from a file using the text.io packages within a VHDL test match. So if you look at kind of the theory of how reading works, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to assume that you have some text file. And to start off with the text file, let's just have it contain ones and zeros. Okay, so it's just going to be an ASCII text file, and each line will represent some piece of information that you're going to drive into, let's say, a dot. So you can imagine you have a text file that has, you know, zero zero zero, and then the next line is zero zero one, then zero one zero. What you do is you open the file by first using the keyword file which then creates a it, it basically opens a file variable so that you can either write to a file or read from a file and then depending on the options that you give it you'll tell the VHDL test bench that you're going to read from this file so you give it a file handle in this example I use FN <clears throat> then you tell it the type of file that you're going to open and this is going to be text and then you give it the command open and then the difference, the big difference is that you open it in read mode. And in this example, you say is, and then this would be a file that already exists. Now, when you do reading from a file, it's all, and you're going to use the information as as stimulus into a dot. There's almost a there's a two step process. The first thing is that you read line by line from the file. So you're going to go in, you're going to create a line variable, and you're going to read a line into a line variable, and then once it's in, okay, so you can do this read line, once you have this read line, or this line variable inside of your test bench, then what you have to do is you have to get the information out of it. So you're going to read the line, and then that brings in the line variable into your test bench, then you have to read from the line variable. So it's a two-step process. And what's neat about it is that when the information comes in from your text file, it's going to come in as like I.O., like standard I.O., so it's, it's like ASCII characters. It's not in a form that you can directly assign to a variable or a signal within VHDL because you have to convert it into a, like standard logic or, uh, or ones and zeros. So then when you read from the line <laughs> within the test bench, then that's going to convert it into a one and zero that you can actually drive to a signal. Okay, so best way to learn it is let's look at an example here. So here's what we are trying to do. Let me show you this example and then we'll type it in in, in VHDL. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right. Here's what we wanted to try to do. We are going to, <clears throat> let me get the right example here. What we are going to do is we are going to have an external file. And we'll have a system X, which is a, just a dot, combination logic circuit. And the input vectors are going to be into this file. And they'll have every possible input code. We will read it line by line. For every line after we read it, we're going to reassign it to this variable ABC test bench, and then that will be driven into the system X test bench, and then the output will come out, and then we'll write it. Okay? And this time, just to get more experience with writing to files, we're going to write the file to a file handle, a unique file handle called standard output. This capital STD underscore output actually means the console or the transcript of whatever the tool is. So this is a special form of output. It's the exact same output that you'd get if you had a report statement, except when you do standard out, standard output, that's how you get the value of variables. So in this example, what we'll do is we'll look at reading from an external file and then writing to the standard output file, and you'll see the results come out uh, at the, in the transcript of model sound. Okay, so I have a new project all set up, and let's take a look at, this is just, here's system X, <clears throat> three inputs, and notice that the inputs come in as a as a three input ver or vector, and that makes it a lot easier because then when I read the line, if the line has zero 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 as the first line of the text file, that then can be directly assigned to this three bit vector. Okay, so this thing has A B C. It's three input vector, three bit input vector, standard logic vector, and if you look at it, I just coded this up as a uh, uh, if then statement, and what we said is. It's true on row one, it's true on row four, and it's true on row five. And that's it, okay? So then I go into my test bench and I have an empty shell of a test bench. Up here, I have my standard logic text.io library, just like before. 
Uh, and then I have this text.io library from the STD library, and those two working in conjunction allow me to retrieve information from the outside world as ASCII text and convert it into standard logic vector. Okay, so down here I've instantiated my, my uh, system, and I am now in my process. And I haven't started typing in anything other than that I have my process ready to go. Okay, so let's think first of all about what we want to do. We need to first create a line variable that is going to, or excuse me, we, we need to create the file variable. So we need to tell this thing, I need a file that I'm going to open. And so what I do is before the begin statement, I say file. Now this is going to be the file that we read, and it will be called fn as my handle. I want to open it as text. I want to open, and then I want to open it in read mode. And I'm going to say is, and now this is where we give it a name. We haven't created this thing yet. Okay, so we we don't have this thing yet. We gotta actually go and create it. So let me let me do this here. Let's see. So what do we want to call this? Uh, well, let's just follow along with like the textbook <laughs> and do input vectors top deck dot text okay now this thing has to have information in it so it, this would probably be a good time to go ahead and create it so let's come into here and what I'm gonna do is this is my project folder I'm gonna go ahead and go new and then I'll say text document and I need to call this input vectors dot text so this is gonna be this file that I read from that I created right here not created I'm gonna open it so let's let's create this thing We've just created it. Let's fill it with information. So let's go ahead and double click on it. And notice that it is just this blank file. So now let's type in the input vectors. So what do we want in this file? Well, we actually want to bring in all possible input codes for the dot inputs. So we have ABC is a 3-bit vector. That means we want to have every possible input code. So let's go 000, return, 001, return, 010, return, 011, 101. 100101110111. So it took eight lines. Those are all my input vectors. I save it and I close it. <clears throat> okay, so that's what I'm going to read in. The next thing that I need to do is I need to create some a line variable for when I read that file line by line. So within my process, I'm going to do variable and then I'm going to call it current read line and this is of type line so that's where I'm gonna read so when I do a read line function or read line command it's gonna go to that file grab the line and it's gonna put it in this variable called read current line now it's important to note that on within this line variable it still isn't in our test bench necessarily in a form we can use we have to actually after we read the line then we need to read from the line variable inside of our text bench. So what I need to do is, and when I do that read, I need to do another variable that will hold the value. So let's call this current read field, and this is going to represent like what we actually get out of that line. So we're going to do a read line from the file, and that's going to be put in this current read line variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a read from the read line. <laughs> it's kind of a two-step process. But here's where it is very important. This current read field, this is where we need to define it as a type that is the same of what we're going to use. So this is where we want to take the, those 000s and the 001 information, and we want to have it be interpreted as standard logic vector, and this would be 2 down to 0. So we're going to, once we read it from the line variable, then it's in a form we can mess with. <clears throat> okay. Since we're also going to write to the standard output so and it'll show up down here let me clear the vec the transcript out so we actually need to set up a variable for our line variable so let's do this current uh, right line and in this situation it's a line variable that we're going to write to but instead of creating a new file to write to and creating a new file handle for the output file the output is going to be the output file itself is going to be the transcript window and you use std you would you, you're gonna have the file handle be std underscore logic 
or excuse me, output, and that is a keyword that represents, write it to the console of the transcript window of whatever tool you're in, okay? Okay, so we're all set up to go, and now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and within the begin, we will start coding. Here's how we're going to do this. We are actually going to use a while loop, and I want to loop through every line in the input file, okay? And so in this situation, we're going to have eight of these so we'll have here's our input vector file so it's sitting over here we're gonna have eight lines and I want to read this one through eight okay and I want to continue to stay in a loop where I go line by line by line until we get to the end of the line all right so we're gonna do a line or excuse me a while loop and then I'm gonna use this function called end file of fn and this will be true whenever it reaches the end of my file handle fn. Now what we want to do is we want to go until we see that. So we're actually going to put a not in front of that. So we are going to continue in this while loop until we see we until we see basically the end file be true. Okay, so now I'm going to do a loop and then let me close the loop right here. So I'll do end loop and now I'm sitting here and I'm ready to loop. So all I'm going to do <clears throat> is I am now going to go in here. I'm going to do read line. That is going to go to this text file and it is going to go to the first line and it's going to bring in 000 and I want to put it into my line variable. So I mean to read from the file handle fn. Then I am going to put it into the current read line variable. Now remember, that's the line variable that I defined up here. Okay, so now that line of the file is in within this loop, okay, but it's not in a form that we use yet. It's still in the line variable. We need to get it into this variable. So now what I do is I actually use this function called read, and we are going to read from the current read line. That's the line variable, so we're going to read from that, and I want to stuff that in the current read field. By doing that, I have now converted the 000 that was on the line of this thing, so of my input vectors, and I've converted it, I brought it into my line variable, and then I read from the line variable, and I stuffed it into current read field, and that current read field was of type standard logic vector. So we're, we're at a point where it's in a form we can actually do something with. And what do we want to do with it? Well, what I want to do is I want to put it as the input into the dot. So I actually am just going to come right here and I'm going to go ABC underscore TB gets assigned my current read field. And then let's wait for <clears throat> 100 nanoseconds. So look at what I did. I have now assigned it to that. And the dot is going to calculate it. And the output will appear on FTB. So this should work fine. The only issue now is that we ha we don't have a way to look at what the output is. So let's get our write set up. Now the writing of this actually takes a few more lines of code because here's what we're going to do. Let's begin by <coughs> setting up or filling up <coughs> our current write line variable. So what I want to do is I'm going to write to this current line variable. So I'm going to say current write line and let's put a let's start it with a string called let's see input vector abc underscore tb underscore tb equals and then I'll close that and that just puts some text and then let's put right after that let's actually put uh, the value of what we read in so that's going to be abc tb <clears throat> And then let's do this. I'm going to say, let's now put, let's see, current right line. Now I want to put some text that says uh, the output is this. So I'm going to put a couple spaces and I'll say output f underscore tb equals, and then that's it. Okay, so now what I need to do is I'll also stuff on that line the value of FTB. Okay, so now I'm going to go F underscore TB, and that now has set up my line. So here's what I'm going to have in my line variable. I'll have some text input vector ABC TB is equal to the value that I have in ABC TB, which 
came from reading from that file and then I'm going to have a few spaces and I'll say output FTB equals and then I'll put the value of FTB. At this moment I have filled up my line variable for the right so the current line, current right line variable is now filled with what I want and to get it to the outside world I'm going to write to <clears throat> output current current right line. Okay, so now you're looking at that and you say, well, where did output come from? Well, it turns out that output is the keyword that I use in order to get it to the standard output. Okay, so it is recognized as such. Okay, so let's let's test this now. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say end loop and what I would like to do is after I end the loop, let's just wait so that it actually doesn't do anything after that. Uh, okay, let's just test this out. So let's come into here, project, and we go compile, select it, and see if we have any errors. Got a couple errors. So let's go back in here. Expecting a semicolon near variable on line 31. So I'll double click on that. Oh, I forgot a, very, I forgot a semicolon there. No problem. I'm going to go compile selected here, down to three errors. And we got expecting a semicolon on 48. Okay, I forgot a semicolon. I got two semicolons. <laughs> okay, compile selected. And almost there. String tick. Okay. And 48, expecting a. Oh, forgot to close both parentheses, no problem. You probably did that correct. And then compile selected. Two errors. Guess I should compile more often. No feasible entries for right. Okay, and this is on line 50. And the reason is because I do I messed up. I, I don't write, I write line. Okay, so what I needed to do there, what I should have typed is right line, because what I was trying to do is get my four, my rights to fill up my line variable into the file. So I want to get it out on the first line of the file. So that was right line. Okay, so a whole bunch of errors, but <laughs> that's how it goes. And we got warnings. I don't want any warnings. What does this say? 44 in abstract literal. Okay, so we got a couple different things that are going on here with this error. So if I come back over here, what I've discovered is that the warning that I was getting was because I didn't have a space between the 100 and the nanoseconds. And then the failure in the simulation was because I had input vector instead of input vectors. And so you can, you'd notice that because it couldn't open the input vector.txt file because I named my file input vectors okay so that was kind of what was causing it to fail so okay no big deal so let's uh let's do this let's compile this yeah you never want warnings and if it ever doesn't load <laughs> it didn't work okay so let's let's do this and now we're ready to run this we need to restart the simulation so let's go restart the simulation that'll load everybody in not that i want to restart it okay and now we're going to clear this and we're going to run it okay so Boom, there it is, finally. So input vector ABC underscore TB is 0, 0, 0, and then the output FTB is 0. And look at what happens. It's asserted for row 1, 4, and 5. But more importantly, we read the input vectors from this file. So I actually had this text file that had the input vectors, and I read them in and use them to actually drive the dot, which then produced the right result. And then what also I did is I actually wrote to standard output, which is the keyword for the file is output all in caps, and then that got it to write to the transcript window. Okay, so that's how you read from an external file and write to the console using the file write line or the file output within the text.io package.